Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Kalika and this is day two of Revenge Week. Today we're doing r slash regular revenge. So you're probably gonna be a craftier person after watching this video. When the lesson you hate gets worse. I'm a first year college student studying a course in media production. I won't dwell on this for too long, but the whole premise of the course is to teach us about filmmaking, photography, editing, and also how to make things like media campaigns. We'll get to that in a second. I love my course and love nearly every unit we did until unit six came along. Unit six is the part of the course that teaches us about producing a media campaign, posters, flyers, social media pages, etc. And as a class, we'd been assigned to produce a media campaign for a small coffee shop in town in order to get them more customers and raise awareness for the charity that they supported. The coffee shop is run by a husband, the owner and wife, the manager. We'll get onto them later. Our teacher, let's call her Olivia, used to work at said coffee shop before becoming a teacher and so she knew the owner well and was the person who got us permission to produce the media campaigns. Olivia handed us the briefs that we'd be basing our campaigns on and we got to work planning and producing our campaign materials. As a bit of an art geek, I know my way around Photoshop pretty well and so my posters were done within the first three lessons, leaving me the rest of the time to work on an original song that would be released as part of the campaign. Skip the last Wednesday, the 27th of Feb 19. Olivia instructed us to create social media pages to post our posters and stuff on and take note of how many shares and likes we got on them over a 24 hour period. Remember, we'd had the go ahead from the owner to do the whole campaigns thing. I created a Facebook page called Town College Media for Cafe Name, while simultaneously an Instagram page was set up by one of my classmates. Once I created the page, I uploaded one of my posters. No big deal. I then posted the same poster on my own Instagram page, making sure to tag the coffee shop in the post. Big mistake. When I got home, I got a notification saying coffee shop commented on your post. I thought, ah, oh, cool, they're going to say how much they like it. It was something along those lines. The comment read, Coffee Shop. Hi, thank you for the artwork. It's looking good. Are you part of the coffee shop page created by students at Town College? Thinking I was going to get more compliments, I replied, Yes, indeed I am. Oh boy. I wish I hadn't replied. A little later, I checked my phone again to find I had another comment from the coffee shop. I was honestly shocked when I read it. The comment said, I think before you create a page for a business, you need to get permission from the business owner. Due to impersonating the business will have legal implications. We have spoken to the principal of the college and they are looking further into the matter for us and we will be taking it further with everyone involved. I was stunned. We'd all been told we had the go ahead for the project but this had me seriously doubting that fact and thinking the company were going to take my class to court or something. Trying to save my ass, I replied. At the coffee shop. Oh right, I'm sorry to hear that. But honestly, as students we were told to band together and make these pages a part of the media campaigns part of our course in media production, we weren't told by our tutor that any permission had to be given for us to produce these, only to make the pages and post our advertising materials. They replied, Well they were wrong and you were wrong, so I have passed your name and details to your school and if it doesn't help then I will take it further. Please make sure you delete all of the accounts that have been created for the coffee shop as soon as possible. Alright, so this has gone from, hey we like your artwork, to stop trying to advertise us or we will sue the pants off you. We were giving the coffee shop free advertising as part of our studies and were now being told that if we didn't compromise our course, we'd be sued. Needless to say, I screenshotted the comments and sent them into the class group chat and told them that we needed to take down all of the pages. I also sent the screenshot to my mum and Olivia. Luckily my mum had my parents evening that night and the whole situation was the first thing that was brought up to my class tutor the guy who looks after the whole class, and Olivia. Eyebrows were raised. My class tutor said to my mum to tell me not to worry and that they'd handle it, and so I carried on with my night. The next day, our class tutor comes into our Unit 8 class and calls us all together to tell us what's going on. He tells us that the manager, the person who wrote the comments, had been in touch with the principal of the college, but not to worry and just carry on as normal as he'd sorted out. He also backed up that we had got permission from the owner, but clearly the memo hadn't been passed on. Skip to this Monday. We come into our photography class with our class tutor who has more news. He tells us that the manager had, over the weekend, phoned the deputy head of college twice, complaining that we were taking business away from the shop. I don't get this. How is making advertising accounts for your company taking away business? He also told us how the college had had trouble with the manager before on a local business evening, where the college had bought a few cakes from the shop for the event and were told that if any was left the students could have it. The manager didn't like this one bit, as apparently she phoned up the next day complaining that the college were stealing produce. 
So now we as a class could start to work out what sort of woman we were dealing with. Jump to today, the 6th of March 2019. Back to our Unit 6 class wondering what the hell are we supposed to do now? Olivia has some more news. She tells us how we always had permission from the owner to do the campaigns, but that because the owner didn't want his wife, the manager jumping to conclusions he was talking to another woman, he didn't tell her about the project. That small detail was the thing that led to this whole problem. Olivia then tells us how the manager is bat crap crazy, and when they met to discuss the situation, the manager apparently spoke 20 minutes straight saying how we, the students, had hacked the coffee shop pages, and how she didn't believe that my husband had given us permission. In the end, Olivia got round to telling us our revenge. She told us how the college is removing any association with the coffee shop and how the coffee shop are not going to get any of the free advertising that we were going to provide for them as Olivia didn't want to give free advertising to a company that treated us how they did and sent students threatening messages. Because of the way they utterly shafted us, word has now got out and the coffee shop is losing customers daily and now has the biggest bullet hole in their foot ever. And that ladies and gents is why you should just let students do their work. As for the working class, we find a way around the whole public advertising and we'll be getting graded on our plans for the campaigns and materials themselves. And we never have to hear of the coffee shop ever again. Bully a sick kid? Enjoy the mob. For those who don't know, I was really unhealthy growing up and had lost all of my hair as a result, yet kept a friendly attitude towards others despite how bitter I was about it. This story takes place in the 8th grade, with a bully that wanted to make my life even worse. It was the beginning of the year. I'm doing pretty well health-wise, still as bald as a baby's butt, but it didn't bother me. I'm chatting with some of my friends from the year before casually and this girl keeps shooting me these nasty looks. I don't know what I did to make her mad at me, but whatever, I ignored it. A couple of weeks later, the same girl starts to pester the living hell out of me, stalking me almost. She would stare at me from her locker across the hallway with this angry look. I would ignore this mostly until one day she decides to slam my locker door shut while I'm trying to get my notebooks. I ignore it thinking it was my neighbour's locker again since it's happened a few times until I looked up. She looked so damn smug. I just quirk my brows at her like, okay, and go back to opening my locker. I open it again, she slams it shut again. I just give up and walk into my classroom without the notebook. It was my doodling notebook for when I finished my assignments and just draw. Some of my fellow classmates noticed I didn't have my notebook and a lot of them liked watching me draw and sometimes I'd draw things they wanted. I didn't mind. It gave me something to do since I was a fast student who finished their homework before the bell rang and sat there for about 15 minutes. When they asked me where the notebook was, I said, it's still in my locker. This routine went on for weeks, almost a month and a half. I would try to get my books, notebooks, etc. from my locker and she would slam it shut. I'm a pretty non-combative person if I can avoid it and just let it slide. My classmates didn't think so. It got worse. The bully started stalking me when I would go to the bathroom. I don't know how she got my little bathroom schedule, I always tended to go to the bathroom at the same time every day. I ignored it at first, until she started blocking my stall door. It was one of those doors that swung outward and not inward. I had to army crawl under the stall door just to get out and every time I would have these water stains on my shirt and she and her pack of friends would laugh at me. Middle of the school year comes around, it's getting way worse. After the notebook incident, I made it a habit to carry around all of my books in my backpack. It was a marine backpack that my mum was given from some soldiers that stayed at the hotel she worked at one time. I also started making the habit of only going to the bathroom at home, which was torture to hold it in all day. Well, I'm about to head down to the nurse's office to take one of my headache pills, when the bully grabbed my backpack strap, it was clipped across my chest and threw me into a locker. I was pissed. One of my classmates heard the loud bang of three textbooks in a bag hitting a locker and ran out of the bathroom and saw me just glaring down this girl. All of my classmates knew me as the shy, sick girl who was really nice when spoken to and didn't get angry that easily. So for him to see this angry look on my face confirmed that this person was the one who was bullying me. He talked to me in the class when we came back together and asked me if I needed him to walk with me when I had to get my meds. I told him, no thanks, I didn't want to involve anyone in my problems. He still shadowed me and watched over me for a while, keeping an eye out. The bully got worse again. Instead of throwing me into a locker, she tried throwing me over a flight of stairs. We were on the third floor, and that's when I fought back. I turned around and yelled in her face while using my backpack as a makeshift shield and shoving into her until she hit the wall. It was one thing to throw me in a locker, but to almost throw me down the stairs when I could be mortally injured? Nah. Apparently my shout was ignored by the teachers and my classmates instead acted. I don't know why the teachers didn't do anything at the time, but they definitely got flack for it when I told my mum and dad what was going on. 
The next day, a huge group of my classmates, pretty much the entire class, hovered around me and waited for the bully to show up. I asked the leader of this group, why not stand in the doorway so she doesn't see you? That way she comes out. She didn't take the bait, sadly. End of the year rolls around. We're gathered in the gym getting signatures from our classmates before transferring to high school. She comes up and starts pulling at my shirt and shaking me. Well, we were in a gym full of people and my classmates were still shadowing me. The second they noticed her throttling me, they grabbed her by her shirt and started shaking her and demanding to know why she was doing this to me. She called me a slut? What? I had never spoken to this girl before, except the one time I yelled at her and I distinctly remember only telling her that she was treating me like I was dirt. I never call someone something unless they've wronged me, besides I had never seen you before until you started harassing me. Why would I call you a slut? That's what Katie said. Katie was my best friend. She was the one I opened up to about my plans, me changing my bathroom schedule, the times I had to take my meds, everything. Apparently she told this girl that I called her a slut and was telling her my schedule so she could beat me up. In the end, the bully was just as much a victim as me. Ironically, Katie wasn't in the classroom group that was shadowing me that day. She was instead seated on the bleachers and smiling. Now, this commotion was really loud and the whole grade knew me as the sick girl who was really nice despite my hard times. When they saw the look of betrayal on my face and where I was looking, staring at the only student on the bleachers and smiling, they effing bolted at her. I was left standing there with my bully and just watched as they surrounded Katie. I was feeling awkward enough as it was so I just apologised to the bully for what Katie put her up to. She apologised back at me and said that she should have seen that I was a really nice person. My only thought back then was, what the fly on F gave that away? The fact that I sat there and took your abuse and not once did I attack back until you tried to F and kill me? I didn't say it though, but damn did I want to. By the time the classroom was pulled away from Katie, she was a sobbing mess and begging for my forgiveness. Nope. I don't know why the hell she betrayed my trust and friendship like that, but she turned my entire 8th grade into a nightmare. It was hard enough being a girl with literally no hair, so I was a prime target for bully words from that. But what she did was beyond that level and there was no way I would forgive her for taking advantage of my confiding in her. I still remember how the class asked me if I was okay and I kept telling them that they didn't have to do that. They just wanted to protect me because of the bully she sicked on me and false pretenses. So, lesson learned? Don't mess with a sick kid or a classroom will jump on you. Kid steals from me. I get payback. A little background. I was in the 6th grade at the time and like most kids I had a sweet tooth. I would go out and buy candy, Jolly Ranchers, Lifesavers, etc. and put them into my pencil pouch and eat them during class. I had a cool teacher during the 4th period and would usually eat the candy then. This is important later. I was also very short as a kid. Shorter than most kids anyway. Also important later. So the day starts off normally. I have quite a few candies in my pencil pouch. I arrive at 4th period and the period goes by and I don't eat any of the candy. Soon lunch rolls around. I go and get one of my candies as a snack as I only have one. That's odd because I only let my friends have my candy and I have to give it to them for them to get it. I thought nothing of this and just assumed that I forgot that I ate them. The next day I pack more candies and eat some during 4th period. A kid comes up to me and asks if he can have one. We'll call this kid K for kid. I say no because if I give him one the entire class will be asking for one. He looks at me and then accepts that he won't get any candy and goes back to his seat. But soon I overhear him talking to his friends and making fun of my height. I hate it when people make fun of me but I was weak and emotional at the time so oh well. What was I going to do to stop it? I leave it alone and forget about it. It's lunchtime again and more of my candies were missing. This started to happen a lot and I determined that someone was stealing my candy. I would have none of it. When I got home I go to work. I take my candy and unwrap them ever so carefully so I wouldn't damage the wrapper. I then pop them into my mouth and spit them out. After that I would roll them in mounds of salt. I would then take the wrapper and wrap them up so they looked like they were never touched. The candies looked like they just melted a little. They were hard candies because it was hot out. Perfect. The next day Kid walks up to me and asks for one. I say no. He got up close to me and threatens me if I don't give him one. I stand my ground and say no. I know that he was the one who was stealing my candy and I let my magic happen. I then leave my pencil pouch out in the open so that anyone could take one. I suspect that it happened in 4th period because that was around the time people would see that I have candy and around the time that I would eat them. The period resumes as normal until I hear a retching sound from the corner of the room. I look over and see Kid bending over the trash can throwing up a lung, not literally. I smile and sit back in my chair. My entire class got to miss the period and the kid didn't go home because he wasn't actually sick. Moral of the story, don't steal from me.
Also, sorry if this isn't the best, I'm on mobile. Okay, so that's all for r slash regular revenge. I really hope you enjoyed day 2 of Revenge Week and you stick around as it's only going to get better. As always, if you do want to see more content like this, then please do subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!